This awe-inspiring wonder of human engineering has generated over $2 billion in revenue annually. But did you know that its construction cost the lives of over 25,000 workers? Spanning through 80 kilometers of dense tropical rainforest, this canal was built in one of the most unforgiving environments imaginable. Full of poisonous creatures such as spiders, insects, and disease-carrying mosquitoes. Despite being a safe passage between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, the canal has remained at the center of political tension. Welcome to this captivating video on the Panama Canal. This video delves into its turbulent history. And if that's not enough, we'll take you into the future as we explore the current Chinese government's assumption of control. Get ready for an exciting and informative journey through the Panama Canal. Since the early 16th century, people have been enamored with the idea of connecting the east and west coasts of the American continent through a canal. This is because ships had to navigate around Cape Horn in South America, which was a grueling and lengthy journey of 15,000 kilometers that took almost two months to complete. Having a canal that bypassed this route would be a game changer, as it would provide an economic and political advantage. The tolls charged to every ship that passed through would give control over international freight on this side of the world. Despite the overwhelming benefits, constructing the canal proved to be a challenging task, attempted by several countries, which resulted in thousands of casualties and almost led to a war between two nations. The story of the Panama Canal's construction dates back to the 16th century, when Vasco Núñez de Balbo, a Spanish explorer, discovered that Panama was a narrow land bridge separating the world's two largest oceans. He proposed the idea of constructing a canal to Charles V, the King of Spain, who ordered a survey to determine its feasibility. However, the survey concluded that it was impossible to construct the canal, and the idea remained dormant for 300 years. In the 19th century, an ambitious Frenchman named Ferdinand de Lesseps revived the idea of building the Panama Canal after successfully constructing another mega-project, the Suez Canal. Lesseps believed that the Panama Canal would be easier to construct than the Suez Canal since it was only 40% of its length, and the French had gained valuable experience. The French government approved the plan and funded the entire mission in 1881. While construction of the Panama Canal was underway, another world power had its sights set on building its own canal. The United States planned to construct a canal in Nicaragua, located a few hundred kilometers to the north of Panama. The proposed route would run from Brito on the Pacific side over Lake Nicaragua and end in Bluefields on the Atlantic side. However, there were concerns regarding the potential consequences of ships passing through Lake Nicaragua which is the most critical source of fresh water in Central America. Many scientists feared that the canal would have a detrimental impact on the lake and tried to persuade the United States to abandon their plans. Meanwhile, the French attempted to lead the way in Nicaragua, but they encountered significant engineering problems. Their plan was to build a canal entirely at sea level, just like they had done in Egypt. However, they faced the challenge of ensuring that the canal was deep enough for large vessels, while also preventing the canal slopes from caving in due to steep dredging. The solution was to construct a 400-meter wide canal, which would require extensive excavation work for an 80-kilometer long canal. Moreover, the French had no solution for the fact that the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are at different heights due to tidal differences. Ultimately, these challenges led to the abandonment of the French-led project in Nicaragua. The French-led project in Nicaragua faced a myriad of challenges beyond technical difficulties. The treacherous jungle posed a significant obstacle, with swarms of disease-carrying mosquitoes causing havoc among the workers. Malaria and yellow fever took a devastating toll, with a staggering 200 deaths per month in just three years. Despite trying various tactics, the project became unsustainable and came to a screeching halt in 1894, ending the French involvement in Central America. What's more, the French failed attempts didn't go to waste, opening door for a new player to take the stage, the United States. The U.S. had been grappling with their unsuccessful canal-building efforts in Nicaragua. However, in 1902, Congress stepped in and authorized the purchase of the French assets. The only hiccup was the Colombian government's hesitation due to Panama being a province of Colombia at the time. The deal was ultimately not ratified, but it paved the way for future developments. Back in 1903, the U.S. faced a major obstacle in constructing the Panama Canal, an uncooperative Colombian government. However, President Theodore Roosevelt found a way to deal with the situation by supporting the Panamanian independence movement. He sent a fleet of U.S. warships to surround the Colombian province and ensured the success of the movement. With the help of the U.S., Panama gained independence later that same year and a deal was struck between the two countries. 
In exchange for providing a one-time payment of $10 million and an annual stipend of $250,000, the U.S. guaranteed Panama's independence and received unrestricted rights to build and monetize the canal. The construction of the canal was a monumental task that required ingenuity and innovation. The U.S. designed a canal that utilized a lock system, which allowed ships to be raised and lowered between water at different levels, thereby saving a significant amount of excavation work. At the height of the project, a staggering 40,000 people worked on the canal every day. Unfortunately, the U.S. workers were also plagued by tropical diseases. But scientists understood the role of mosquitoes as carriers of disease, and preventive measures were taken. Despite these efforts, 5,600 workers lost their lives under U.S. supervision during the construction. The canal was finally opened on August 15, 1914, after decades of hard work and thousands of human lives lost. Today, every ship that transits through the canal has to pay a toll based on the size of the ship and its cargo, with a maximum of $450,000 for a single passage. On average, 9,000 ships make the passage every year, and business is booming. The Panama Canal has become a landmark project and a source of pride for U.S. engineering, demonstrating the country's ability to overcome obstacles and achieve great feats of engineering. The Panama Canal project was an astronomical undertaking for the U.S. with a whopping cost of $375 million, which, adjusted for inflation, would equate to nearly $10 billion in today's currency. The U.S. also shelled out an additional $40 million to the French and $10 million to the Panamanian government. This project was, at the time, the most expensive construction fate the U.S. had ever undertaken. After years of unrest and public outrage regarding U.S. involvement in Panama's rational politics, the transfer of control of the canal was finally handed over to the Panamanian people in 1999 during the Bill Clinton administration. This decision marked a turning point in the canal's history and represented a significant milestone in Panama's quest for sovereignty. Despite this achievement, the Panama Canal still faces scrutiny and apprehension from the global community. Skeptics worry about the level of control that Panama and its stakeholders have over the international maritime traffic, fearing that it could lead to undue influence and manipulation of the global shipping industry. However, the canal continues to be a vital artery for international trade, bridging the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and serving as a critical lifeline for global commerce. The involvement of China in the Panama Canal has become a hot topic of discussion in the West. Recently, the Chinese company Landbridge Group signed a deal worth a whopping $900 million to take control of Panama's Margarita Island port, the largest port situated at the entrance of the canal to the Atlantic Ocean. While Landbridge Group is a private company, its close ties with the Chinese Communist Party, coupled with the fact that its board comprises mainly ex-government officials, have raised concerns in the West. What's more, the Chinese government has given the green light for a new canal to be built through Nicaragua, something the U.S. attempted more than a century ago. A team of high-profile Chinese lawyers and businessmen have struck a deal with the Nicaraguan government to build the canal at a cost of $40 billion. Although the plans have already been approved and financed, there are still concerns regarding the environmental impact, as was the case with the original plans for the canal. Despite the growing concerns, the demand for consumer goods will likely continue to fuel the expansion of the Panama Canal. However, the involvement of China in this expansion and the potential impact of the new canal in Nicaragua are issues that require serious consideration. As we await the outcome of these developments, it's important to keep a close eye on the situation and to engage in discussions about the potential impact of these projects. What are your thoughts on the matter? Share your views in the comment section below. If you found this information useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates on global developments. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.